Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. The title message is, Be Careful of Covetousness. Be Careful of Covetousness. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you first of all for saving us from hell by the precious Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for eternal security. Thank you for our church where we hear sound doctrine and sound preaching. Thank you for pastor. Pray that you'll be with him right now. Pray that you would give him the liberty and the power and authority from you, Lord God, to declare your word to your ears. And pray that you'll be with each and every one of us here and those who are listening online. Pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to understand your words. Help us to take heed to your words and hide your words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. For those who are sick, who are not here, pray that you'll be with them, comfort them, and raise them up, Lord God, so that they can join us next time. Protect us from devil's attack, and we pray that you receive the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 The thing, one, one sin that always hovers around, you know, say Christians, as Bible-believing Christians, is covetousness. You know, you and I always want good stuff. You know, who doesn't want to live more comfortable? Who doesn't want to have more resources? Who doesn't want to have, you know, bigger things and better things? However, Bible specifically says, beware of covetousness. And Lord told the parable of a rich fool. As a Christian, you have to ask yourself on a daily basis, you know, where's your heart at when it comes to covetousness? Wanting things. Covetousness is wanting something you don't have. So literally, you know, you could be covetous of car, home, you know, material things, even people, positions. Covetousness is wanting something you don't have and which God has not given you. God said he'll provide all your need. Amen. And that means that as a Christian, You should be content with everything that you have. However, if you are not, then something has gotten in your heart. And most likely, it's covetousness. You don't have something that you want, which God hasn't given to you. So you feel like, man, why not me? You know, it all comes down to the basics. The Bible says you and I are just sinners, saved by grace. Or with Isaiah, we're like nothing, less than nothing. Yeah. It's almost like a dog. I mentioned it. You know, we have a dog, you know, <laughs> our best friend. <laughs> he, when I see at least our dog, I don't know about other dogs, you know, he just loves and 
are happy with our, what we give them. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I give him four treats, but they're tiny ones, okay? <laughs> He's happy. Yeah. Sometimes I give him one. He's still very happy, yeah. right? But us, Christians, if we don't get what we want, we always complain. Yeah. And then you start thinking this prosperity gospel in your life. I gave up you know, so many stuff, so Lord should give me back. I don't even know what you gave up, right? You probably gave up sinful ways, which is good for you, right? What more? Lord gave you eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yeah. What more do you need? No, I need, I need a spouse, you know? I need a good husband, good wife. I've been saved for two years, three years, five years. Where's my husband? Where's my wife? What kind of Christian is that? This is not about give and take with God, right? right? He gave everything. Yeah. So you're supposed to give him everything, That's right? right? Amen. And once people start thinking like that, you get out of fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ, definitely. And then covetousness, you know, this is point number one. Covetousness is very, very related to pride. Pride. Yeah. Covetousness and pride go together. Devil wanted something. He wanted what God had. He wanted to be like God. Yeah. Usually, covetous people are proud people. Vice versa. Proud people are covetous. Yeah. I mean, you look at your own life. I look at my own life. The times that I was proud, right, looking back, man, I wanted everything, and I thought I deserved everything. Sure. Right? And that's when God's going to get you as a Christian. Think about it. Who are you and who am I to complain and murmur to God and to others that as a Christian, I should have gotten this or I shouldn't have gotten this? I mean, Romans 8.20 says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. God said everything. Good or bad, work together for your own good right. and my own good. Then as a person, as a Christian, in order to get rid of covetousness from your life, it's very simple. Stop complaining. Man, everybody just complains and murmurs about everything this day and age. Weather is too hot. Hey, try to live in the equator. Try to live where Sahara Desert is. Be a phoenix. You know, our neighbor, they're, they're breaking records like every year. Yeah. I mean, over 100 degrees for like how many consecutive days? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we're, we have flesh. So the first thing we say is it's too hot. Lord, you know, I can't stand this 85 degrees, you know. And they're laughing at you from Midwest, you know, Southwest, you know, everybody else. Just thank God, as a Christian, number one thing is that, you know, we're not going to burn in hell. Amen. Right? Amen Think about it. Praise the Lord. I mean, can you imagine if you're at Death Valley, which is like, you know, usually above 120 during the summer hot days, I mean, trying to stay there without water for like 15 minutes, even five minutes. You got to be dehydrated very quickly. And just like the fool that we saw, rich fool, in our parable, you could build all of your you know, wealth. And you could try to live your life trying to get more money, more money, more money. Because it comes down to it, right? You are motivated by love of money. And then the Lord says, time to go. Like the Bible says in verse 20, Luke chapter 12. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. When, when, then, whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? You and I have to have a good, you know, godly perspective. 
you know, short view, long view, everything, you have to be content with what you have. Yeah. You, don't, you want covetousness to be out of your life? You have to stop complaining and you have to be happy with what you have. Amen. Right? Yeah. You have a garment to wear? Be happy. Yes. Right? You have a transportation? Be happy. Yeah. You have a place to you know, lie your head on and with the roof on top? Be happy. Amen. Be content. Thank you, God. Why would you have to always feel like you deserve and you need more? That is a characteristic of very selfish people and selfish person. You say, I'm not selfish, but if you are constantly wanting something that you don't have, you are selfish. And the greatest cause, one of the greatest cause, if not the greatest cause of this downright, you know, people being so covetous this day and age, including Christians, is the TV and the cell phone. Yes. Yeah, internet. You know, lust of the eyes. Yeah. That's why you got to protect your eyes. And parents, you have to protect your children's eyes. Amen. Like, you see it's what you want. That's why you got to be careful where you go. There's reason why many of the translations corrupted 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't even look at it. Yes. But they changed it because they want to look at it. No, they want to see, they want to feel, they want to touch, they want to have. Yeah, yeah. Bible correctors, at the end of the day, it all comes down to one thing. You know, they want to enjoy their sin. Right. That's, true. That's why they change the verses. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right? You know, I, mean, I was discussing it you know, on Wednesday night service. You know, back in Deuteronomy, it talks about sodomites. Right? Yes. Homosexuality is bad. Yes, it is. Yes. But NIV, new versions, change it to temple prostitute. What does that even mean? Yeah. Right? That's God's direct judgment against sin of homosexuality. Yeah. Last time I checked, there's a big difference between meanings of homosexuality and temple prostitute. I mean, they're both bad sins, but, you know, one sin is specifically God talked about sodomites. Yes. But versions all change it. Yeah. yeah. And we live in this society where those are being accepted. Right. You look at all these new generations. I mean, if their middle name is not covetousness, I don't know what their names are. I need this. I deserve it. Every time you see news, there's a little kid crying out to their mom and dad at a Walmart, Target, any department store, getting angry at them, yeah. you know, right. acting like a biggest, you know, you know what, and then they deserve some discipline. Right. Absolutely. They just scream. Yeah. You know, when little kids or grown-ups, like liberals, a lot of them, Conservative too, but mostly a lot of them, when they are in a debate or you know, they can't stand it, they just start screaming. Yes. We're talking about grown up woman, 34 right, right. year old, and they just like, ah, yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. I saw a clip where it says, you know, somewhere in New York, you know, someone's, I think, taught street preaching, you know, Jesus saves, you know, and, then, and she, she can't handle it. So she just, she's in front of the, you know, the, I guess, you know, street preacher, and she just screams. She just screams. Uh, I mean, like, she screams, and then she, you know, get herself together again, and she screams again, and screams and screams. Why? Because they think that they deserve every good things in the world. And that includes, for them, even though salvation is the best thing they'll ever get, they just say, it's not for me. Yeah. Why? Because so much pride is in their heart because they're grown up with covetousness. Yeah. Like, you know what? When I tell my mom and my daddy, they give me everything. You know? I need my phone. I need my computer. 
I need this clothes, I need these shoes, you know. I need this app, I need that app, you know. I don't care, go get a second loan, third loan, you know. You are supposed to make me happy. Give me everything. And I'm 10 years old, you know. <laughs> By the time you were that way, I mean, if you deal with kids that are in high school, I mean, you could ask, you know, Brother Oscar here. I mean, it's out of control. Yeah. All right, when I graduate from college, I'm going to need at least six digit, you know, six figure. That's minimum, you know. <laughs> but I want middle, you know, and then high. I mean, they're something about them, the society, God of this world, the devil, has really messed up their mind. Yeah. But as Christians, you and I have to be very careful of not putting our place where we want something that we don't have. Yeah. You know, when it's due time, if you are a diligent worker and faithful, God's going to give you what you need, yes. right? That's it. And that's what you should be happy about. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And this is, you know, obviously many of the translations change these verses as well. Because they can't handle it. Because their contentment is feeding and, you know, making sure that their wealth increases and increases. First Timothy chapter 6, let's look at verse 6. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You have to be content. And the Bible says it's a great gain. You know, you want to gain something in your life? Have godliness with contentment. That's it. You know, a lot of people, you know, the number one reason why people get sick is because stress. Stress. Christians, no different. Stress. And you're stressed about, you know, my job, money, you know. Good reason like health, right? And it's legit, right? But... You have to be content. Yes. You know what that contentment shows? You're trusting in the Lord instead of anything else. You're not letting the world influence you. You're only letting Lord Jesus Christ, who's living inside of you, to be the influencer. Amen. You know, that term, this day and age, you know, you call all this, you know, YouTubers or wherever, you know, TikToks, influencers, right? Yeah. 99.9% .9 are bad influencers. Right. You know, all they're showing is, oh, yeah, you know, I got this great thing, guys. So what? Right. You know, hey, I'm meeting this great guy. I'm meeting this great girl. Good for you. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, you should get married first, right? Yeah. <laughs> because you guys are doing some dumb stuff. So all these things. So think about how content you are in your life as a Christian. The fact that you're saved, you should be forever content. The right. fact that you have a right Bible, Amen. King James Bible, you should be super, super content. Amen. And then thirdly, you should be quadruple content that you have a local Bible-believing church to go to. Amen. And then fourthly, whether you like it or not, you have a body of Christ where you can have fellowship That's with. Right. right? You should be content. Yes. I mean, I'm telling you one thing. If you're not happy, if you're not content with the brothers and sisters sitting around you, then you'll never be content with the outside world. Sure. They could act like your best friend. They could act like, you know, what's the term? Every, everybody uses BFF, like best friend forever. I mean, so many acronyms out there. Yeah. You know. Best fake friend. Yeah, and they, they become <laughs> fake friends. When push comes to shove, those people will not be standing next to you. When it comes to money, when it comes to status, when it comes to positions at work or social society, or when it comes to just plain right, you know, when it, giving up something for or sacrificing for somebody that you love, they will ignore you. Nine out of ten people minimum, right? Then... Why are you not content with your brothers and sisters in Christ? A lot of times it's you. Yes. I mean, you're the problem. Amen. I mean, a lot of times because of you, you're not content. Simple as that. 
This one I remember when Bob Jones Sr. said, the problem is with you. <laughs> Simple yeah. as that. Right. I mean, the problem is with you. Wow, five words. What a great phrase. Yeah. The problem is with you. I mean, so do this. You know, when you wake up, you know, you're washing up, look at the mirror and just say problems with you. Right. Well, that's it. If anything goes wrong in your life, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because of the person that you see in front of your mirror. Right. Because of that person. Yeah. And if you're not content, you'll never have great gain. Think about it. As a Christian, if you're not take next step, you're not go further and further and get closer to the Lord. But if you're not content, then you can't go far. God never uses someone who's not content with what they have. You know, let's look at, I mean, look at Apostle Paul. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And we're talking about Apostle Paul, who's gone through probably as many, many heartaches, as many physical, you know, hardships that a human being could go through during his ministry. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Amen. I'm sorry. Are you going through financial hardship? Be content. Yeah. Are you going through physical illness? Be content. Mm. Are you going through relationship breakups? Be content. Because verse 12, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. This verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. I mean, you will find your satisfaction. You'll get rid of covetousness when you just trust in the Lord and you do everything through Christ, which strengthens you. Amen. And that includes covetousness. That includes the wanting something that you don't want. I mean, you don't have. Only the Lord can satisfy that, Amen. you know, yearning, right? Yes. If the Lord says, hey, that's best for you. <laughs> what are you going to say? Thank you, Lord, right? It's like, it's like, My will is that you live in a hut. Okay. My will is that you eat some, you know, proteins, the worms. No. <laughs> your flesh says no, but your, your new man says, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow you, Lord. I mean, he's not going to put you in a place where you cannot handle anyways, right? Yeah. According to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, right? Because he's faithful. Then think about all the things that you've been complaining this day and age, right? If you've been complaining about the weather, you're complaining to the creator. Yeah. Don't be complaining about the weather, Amen. you know? Be happy that you're not burning in hell when it gets hot, yes. you know? Be happy when it gets so cold, you're still not burning in hell, Amen. right? You know, for everything about the weather, just be happy and thank God that you're not burning in hell, Amen. right? Amen. Thank God that you're not living in Antarctica, you know, if you feel like you're so cold, or North Arctic somewhere, right? Yes. Thank God. I mean, this area has some, one of the best weathers. Yes, it right? is. Yep. It does. Yes. I mean, we just don't get enough rain. But as far as, you know, weather-wise, being hot and cold, you know, sometimes people from East Coast or Midwest, they come and laugh at us. It's like 55, 60 degrees, and we're like shivering, and we're really cold. Yeah. And they're out there walking around with, you know, shorts and t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. So we have to be thankful for everything, right? And whatever job you have, you have to be thankful. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you did your best and you're continuing to do your best, be diligent, just be happy, yeah. right? Don't want something that you don't have right now. You're always like, okay, you know. I'm only a supervisor. When am I going to be a VP, Lord? I'm like, Lord, where's my VP position, right? You know, or you have your own retail business, right? You know, my revenue is only just enough to support me and my family, Lord. 
Well, you know, I see like the Bezos and Musk and Buffett of the world. When's that gonna happen to me, Lord, right? And then you go into investing. Christians, be careful. Yes. There you go. You know what? Lord's gonna bless me because I'm his child. Because I go to a local Bible-believing church. I go out there and street preach. I win souls to the Lord. So, Lord, I'm gonna put my money on this stock. So, and then you lose everything. You come and crying out to God, God, why? You know, you're gambling with your money, right? So you have to, there's a fine line between when you're gambling and when you are actually, you know, using the money the right way, right? That's why the Lord said, you know, the Bible says, do not be hasty to be rich. Amen. You know, if you have $10 today, don't try to get a million dollars by tomorrow. How are you going to get that overnight? How are you going to get that in 30 days? I know how. You're going to go to a place called Vegas, you know, four-hour drive from here, and then you're going to pray to God really hard, right, Christian? Lord, I'm at this table. You know, next number has to be seven. Next number has to be ten, you know. I mean, again, God never wants you to do something wrong in order to do right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, one of the prosperity preachers was caught at Vegas. And then his, his answer to someone, hey, aren't you the pastor? His answer was, you know what, I'm here to get some tithe for my Lord. <laughs> wow. What kind of testimony is that, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, if you type that in, you're going to have numerous numbers of False preachers just name every race, every continent. Yeah. Right? You gotta see who's who's of the you know religious leaders. They are into gambling. Yes. But why? Because they have covetous mind. Yeah? They want something that they don't have. Oh, you know what? My church, it needs to be state of the art. You know, you know. We need to have like a vending machines out there, you know, espresso machines, you know. When our congregation comes in, you know, they just put the cup in and all that. You know, we need to have like a mist coming in during hot days, you know. I mean, whatever. Oh, we need foot, le- foot rest, right? You know, people are complaining, our pews are so bad and stuff. Hey, go to Africa. Yes. Their pews are the ground. Yeah. yeah. Dirt. Yes. Yeah? And they appreciate and love the Lord more than any developed country out there. You know, during the camp, you know, Brother Robert Garcia, you know, he sent me a video because he went with Pastor Jin Kim to Malawi. Man, and they're different. I mean, they're appreciative of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to covetousness, man, they don't have much. They live in the villages, they have huts, right? They don't have running water many places. And they don't, they eat a lot of spoiled food, right? They don't have good refrigeration, yeah. right? I mean, their body gets used to it and stuff, but they're so happy. Amen. From young to old, you know, they found that new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. They're just very happy. You know, they just love praising the Lord, right? Yeah, you, could, you can't see a frowning face. You can't see a face that's really saying that, oh, this worship is going too long. <laughs> Man, covetous people, always. You know, one of the things that you can measure is that, man, this, this Bible study is going too long, you know? This preaching is going too long, you know? Like YouTube people, like, oh, man, when is it going to end, you know? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, what is it, right? You don't want what God wants. You only want what you want. That's why. And that is the fleshly lust, yes. comfort of the flesh, so what happens, though, when you start going into covetous ways over and over and over? Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And if you are a covetous person, I mean, you definitely need to get right with the Lord and then get rid of those ways and find strength in the Lord and be content. What happens is that the list of sins that we see, you are going to have been connected. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. So this is one of the solutions as well. 
if you don't want to be covetous. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So verse 2, I mean, this is literally what we have to do every single day. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So things of the earth will just burn up one day, right? Yes. You just need what you need that is useful. That's it. Verse 3, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Mortify therefore, so kill it. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. So your flesh, our flesh, is still trying to do this stuff. And it starts with fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. So we see this covetousness, which is idolatry. You're an idolater. You know, yes. Think about it. I mean, the, one of the worst sins that a person can do. Yes. Why? You put something above God. Yes. Anything above God is idolatry. That's, right. That's why, you know, you look at certain religions. If you put Mary above Lord Jesus Christ, you're idolater. Yes. St. Bartholomew, St. Benedict, you know, Pope Gregory, the 1 to the 25, you know, Peter, everybody. No. See, covetousness is in that level. Man, if you are constantly wanting something that you don't have, which God hasn't given you, man, it's idolatry. But it's in the same sentence with other sins that we see. Yes. Yeah. And these are all perverted sins. Yeah. So covetous people, when I thought about it, a lot of covetous people are very lustful people. Exactly right. A lot of covetous people are perverted. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. You know, a lot of marriages break apart because of inordinate affection. You're just not happy with each other in the Lord, what God has given you. Right. And you start looking for alternative ways in love, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to last. Evil concupiscence. I mean, this, see, from the pulpit, it's really hard to describe certain things like this because it's so dirty. Yes. Right. But think of it as, Really, really, really perverted things that people will do. And covetousness. Why is covetousness together with them? Because people who are usually covetous falls into this type of sin, and they want more and more. I don't know. Human beings get tired of things very easily. I've seen my wife, you know, every day for past 10 years, you know. Okay, maybe I need to have another wife. <laughs> I've seen my husband every day for the last, you know, eight, nine years. Oh, 20 years? I think I need a new face, you know. I mean, that's talking about <coughs> longevity. Nowadays, after a few months, they're like, oh, man, I've seen this face the last two months. Man, I can't see it anymore. And then start going to the core, you know, well, what was it, like an ir irreconcilable character or something? That's like their number one reason, right? Why? Because those people are into fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, even concupiscence, which is part of, right here, covetousness. You're constantly wanting someone that God hasn't given you, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to do it the right way, Amen. right? You have to do it the right way. No. And if you tie the knot till death to us apart, that's it. Amen. Until you die, you have to love that person. Yes. Amen. And that includes Christians too. Yes. <laughs> I mean, 
Do you really know? You know, if you go and study, you know, Book of Romans, you and I are adulterers many times because we cheat on Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, by not being faithful to Him. Yes. So before you start criticizing and judging everybody, you always have to check yourself, yes. right? Yes. And, st- and stop criticizing your wife or your husband, right? right? The greatest thing is that if someone truly repents of their ways and get right with the Lord, Amen. who are you to say no, sure. right? right. You know, I talked with Brother Richard like about Peter's case. You forgive seven times, 77 times. Just do it. You can't let that get in the way of a relationship either. That's person being covetous of wanting a perfect person. Only perfect person ever lived and ever is Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Perfect man and perfect God here on earth. All of us are imperfect. I don't know. Amen. So be content with the imperfect person that God has given you in your life. Right? As long as your parents, for children, as long as your parents are, you know, Bible-believing Christians who want to do right, they'll make mistakes. Be content. Would you want someone who's, I mean, uh, this day and age, there are a lot of single parents, right? Yes. If you have two parents, be thankful you have two parents, right? Yeah. Especially if you're their their Bible-believing Christians, right? If you have one parent, still be thankful, you know? Yes. If you have no parents, you know, thankful. Be thankful you have Father God, Amen. right? So we can't be complaining in any situation. And that's why if you fall into covetousness, you're an idolater. Yeah. Not only that, if you're covetous, you fall into temptation left and right. True. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 6. You and I, our desire is to live holy, Right? God, God said, be holy for I am holy. But however, your covetousness, usually connected with love of money, then what's going to happen? Look at verse 8. Verse 7. Tim, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. What does the Bible say? You, you really have to be careful. If you're super covetous, you just want money, 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 money. What's going to happen? You're going to fall into temptation and a snare. Yeah. And a lot of foolish and hurtful lusts, right? For your advancement of career, you know, I'm going to have fellowship with people at a bar, you know. You're like, I'm not going to drink, Lord. It's happy hour. It's my path to becoming a director and a VP so I could give more money to the church. Always forgetting it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. It's like a dirty money. Why would God want that? He owns everything anyways. Yeah. You know, when we give tithes, we're just giving God what rightfully belongs to him. Right. Yeah. It's like God has given us that 80% for us to, or 90, I don't know how much you guys give, like, for us to enjoy. Amen. We're just giving back what rightfully is, right? But what happens is that if you are covetous, if you love money, a lot of people get into affairs, and bad relationship. Yes. Because how does your spouse know 24-7 what you're doing? They don't. You go to work. You're supposed to be out at work for 40 hours a week. Sometimes you go on a what, business trip, whatnot, right? If you're a covetous person, you better watch your heart if you haven't done already. You know, you're going to do something bad, and you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. It's natural. That's what the Bible says, right? right? That's why marriages break up. That's why relationships break up because you are not happy with what you have. You're not content. So instead, you think that I'm going to make my mate happier, my spouse happier, if I make more money. 
What does that mean? You just love money. Then that's going to bring, oh, yeah, honey, here's extra, you know, a few thousand dollars. And they ask you, how'd you get it? Ah, oh, you don't have to know. I just work hard. Really? I don't know. Let's find out. But the funny thing is, be sure your sin will find you out. Bible says it. If you have gotten any of your materials and possessions against the will of God, against the word of God, you better get right with the Lord. You better like give it up, disown it, or do something because it's going to come back and bite you. Very, very hard. That's why as Christians, we, you know, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto me. We do our best everywhere. And if Lord closes door, be happy. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have given me this job to do well. Yes. If he opens, thank you, Lord. Right. Be happy. Yes. Right? Wherever you are, instead of going beyond Lord's answer, you could clearly see that Lord said, no, 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 wait, no, no, no. You're like, yes, Lord. And then you just move forward. And when that happens, you will definitely fall into temptation and less. And when that happens, whether it's your financial ruin or whether it's your, you know, relationship ruin, right? Yeah. You're just going to ruin your testimony. I mean, I don't know how long. You might never get it back, right? That's why in the pulpit, it's, it's so wicked that there are so many false preachers out there, you know. They misuse, you know, offerings, right? They're in a, you know, I don't know, what's the word to say, you know, Ill illegal or bad or whatever relationship would they have with their other people, right? You know, a lot of adultery and fornication because they go hand in hand. So we saw it in, Col yeah. I mean, in Colossians chapter 3, right? You know, whenever there's covetous money, there's always lust involved. It always goes together, right? So, if you are striving after love of money and covetousness, Christian, you're going to fall into temptation. And not just, we're not just talking about simple temptation we're talking about here. You're going to fall into those really, really bad temptations. And you can't get it back. The worst thing about, you know, committing sin is that, you know, if you confess, Lord's going to forgive you, right? Yeah. Once and for all. But it's, there's still memories of it, yeah. remembrance of it, yeah. and testimonies of it, yeah. right? So I think the worst thing is that you're trying to witness to your colleague at work, at school, anywhere, and that they've seen you. They've seen your testimony. Like, I'm sorry. You know, they're not going to probably say it right to your face, but in their heart. I'm sorry, man. I can't hear you out. You're talking to me about Jesus Christ and gospel, but I saw how you live, right? You were there with me. So that's why it's best to not be there with people that you're not supposed to be or at a function, right? Just don't be there. Then they know for sure you're not there. But if you're constantly there in those functions, they're going to think you're one of us. You know, devil loves to do that. Yeah. Devil loves to say you're one of us. And devil hates your gut, right? Yeah. You're saved. You're going to go to heaven. He's going to burn in hell. But he wants to make sure that you look like one of his. Yes. Always. So that you will be no good Christian to the rest of the world out there, saved or unsaved. And it's coming from this covetousness, yeah. always wanting something that you don't have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You gotta get rid of it. Just be happy with what you have. Be content. Thank God. Amen. And obviously, if you're super covetous or you're covetous, or even remotely covetous, you're not a thankful person. I mean, that's, that's like one plus one equals two, right? It's like, okay, covetous equals, you know, pride equals unthankful. I mean, Lucifer, Satan was unthankful. Yes. You know, that's he rebelled against God. I mean, a lot of covetous people, like people who love money, fall into temptation, snare, hurtful lust, and foolish stuff. 
the unthankful. Are you thankful to God for everything, number one, especially your salvation, word of God, church, body of Christ, and everything? Are you thankful for your family? Amen. Are you thankful for your spouses, right? Yeah. Again, your spouses probably are the most imperfect persons that you see, right? Because you see them all the time, you know? So you're going to find out imperfection from them naturally. But thank God. Your children, yes. you got to thank God for them. Yes. Parents, Amen. be thankful, right? Especially godly parents, right? Thankful for your grandparents, thankful for your aunt, anybody. Right? You just have to be more thankful. You know, as we conclude, just think about your heart this day and age. You know, we're so busy with many things going on in our lives. Work, home, you know, children, raising children, you know, everything else. The weather, you know, people will say. But have you been really thankful? Have you been really content? Have you gotten into this snare and temptation of, you know, falling into covetousness. Don't look for things that God hasn't given you, right? Be thankful things that God has given you, yes. right? And then every time God gives you more blessing, you'll be that much more happier, yes. content. Yes. I think goal in our life is be content serving the Lord. Right? Yeah. I don't want to be unhappy serving the Lord, right? You want to be content serving the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father, we do need to check, rewind, and see where our heart was when it comes to covetousness. Have we been unthankful Christians, complaining Christians, full of pride, where we think that we deserve more and more in everything when we don't deserve anything? We need to be more thankful, Lord. Help us to be more thankful. Help us to be content with what we have. And because godliness with contentment is great gain, Lord. We want to get closer to you, Lord. And help us to be a good testimony, especially to others out there, where we're the only Jesus Christ, the only Bible they see, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the service, Lord God. And above all, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.